Hello friends, greetings again from the Basque region of Spain. We are having a beautiful day out there today after a good number of days with rain. It's good to see the sunshine and all the green and I can see cattle and there's sheep and goats out there. So it's a, it's a pretty day outside. Uh, there, this is our 40th day of confinement and now they're beginning to talk about children being able to get out for a walk of up to a kilometer and between certain hours and slowly some restrictions being lifted but they're also talking about public places and public events being drastically reduced and i guess supervised or or affected up way way into the fall so my goodness that's uh, that's significant okay well i'm hoping this won't be too long today but I have a, an illustration I want to to do and it may take a little bit of time but I would like to look at the story of Peter today actually we're gonna see more than just Peter again but it's uh, related to his confinement in the prison where Herod put him and was going to pull him out and, and kill him like he had James a few days earlier. But let me read some passages here, some verses in Acts chapter 12, verse 2. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions, of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. And then verse 11, And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Okay, well, he was in confinement. We're not sure how many days, but not, not very long. But uh, let's look at some background of this passage where, where Peter is put in prison. James, as we read, was killed by Herod's sword, and the Jews are happy. And so he, because of that, he proceeds to get, to get Peter, which is basically what we read. Now, one thing of context here, right before this passage, there is some explanation that is interesting, and that is that Stephen's martyrdom had sparked a persecution that had spread believers all over the place and was specifically responsible for the establishment of a church way up north in, in Antioch. And at this moment, when this story is happening, the church in Antioch, which has grown substantially, is sending help to the church of Jerusalem for the suffering they're going through. And so God is always doing way more than we think he's doing. And so the passage gives us a little bit of that. Okay, I want to look at three, basically three people, though Peter's confinement is the focus or the event around which everything is, is, uh, is turning, I guess you could say. First of all, Herod, Herod, this Herod here is Herod Agrippa, and his grandfather was Herod the Great, the one who was related to the, the Bethlehem slaughter of the babies, okay? So this is his grandson. He highly respected or made a show of respecting a Jewish law, the temple, he was friends with the Pharisees, and so that's behind this, him being happy when the Jews were pleased. The Jews there were the Pharisees and the ones who hated the Lord. And so he hated Christians, and he realized that it was to his favor to, to go after them. And then this is, a, what I, this is a, something I wanted, it's going to take a little bit of time. His death, Herod's death, you may remember that he died at the end of this chapter, eaten of worms at a place called Caesarea. So I'm going to throw up some pictures because Josephus gives us a very interesting account of what happened. And I'm going to make it as short as possible. But in, in 2007, when we were able to go there with our co-workers, the Alvarez and, and, and Bill Patterson, one of the places we went to were, was what was left of the 
the theater in Caesarea where Herod went on this occasion when he died. And I'm going to th throw up a picture, two pictures. One of them, I am on the stage where Herod would have been giving his speech to the people of Caesarea. They are in this big amphitheater that I'm not going to show a picture of that, I don't think. But he, as he stands where I'm going to be standing in the picture, he is facing east. And as he gives this oration, two important, two important things come together. First, he is dressed in a coat of silver mail. I think you would say it that way. Tiny little silver leaves. He is completely in, in, a, in a coat of arms or whatever you would call that with tiny little silver pieces. And so he is looking at the people and right as he is giving his oration, the sun peeks over the top of the, of the theater of the, where the people are seated and the morning sun comes over and hits him you know, on his, with, with what he is dressed. And so when I was there, I wanted to do an experiment. We got there and I had forgotten to take a mirror. And so I asked and the only one, the only mirror we had was a tiny little mirror about that big that Tete had in her purse. And so she gave it to me. Then Juan went up into the, um, up into the stands and took these pictures. So I moved this tiny little mirror, about two inches by two inches, maybe something like that, until it just right reflected the sun. Now the sun wasn't right where it was that day with Herod. It was higher, but still the, the effect is the same. Notice what one tiny little mirror looked like when the sun hit it, and imagine him being coated completely in a silver, in a silver garment. And so when the sun hit him, the people began to say, it's a God, it's a God, it's a God. And he accepted that. And God, the Bible says the angel of the Lord killed him instantly, immediately. Well, he didn't die immediately, but he was instantly um, hit uh, by the Lord and he died just a few days later. So that's the background. And so uh, the, the, there are the pictures up there. At some point in the story, I'm going to put them up there so you can see what one tiny little thing and imagine a guy dressed in polished silver. Okay, well, so much for Agrippa. Let's leave it at that. Okay, James. And this is where, this is where the devotional gets a little somber. James is killed. I think it's there, verse 4 or so. He is the first, or two, he is the first apostle to die, the first martyr among the apostles, and his death is 12 years after, basically, 12 years after Stephen's. So uh, there's been quite a number of years have gone by. And he dies there, I think it's in verse 2, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's in verse 2. He dies... And that's it. There is absolutely nothing more said about him. And we think, well, what about his wife, children, other family members, close friends? It's just like, bam, he's snuffed out. At least in, in Stephen's case, we, we know a little bit what happened after, but not with, with James. It is, he is simply cut off. And nothing more is said. We'll come back to that in a little bit. That's James. That's all there is. Now we come to Peter. Peter was arrested and Herod, you know, devoted 16 soldiers to him. And apparently in groups of four, they went 24-7, uh, two of them right by him and two of them at the door. And they watched him for, for you know, 24 hours a day until Herod was going to pull him out and, and kill him, execute him publicly. Well, while Herod had his soldiers um, around the clock guarding Peter, the Lord had his church apparently around the clock praying for Peter. And so then the, Peter is sleeping, the angel comes in, smites him in the side. It's, like, it's almost like they're make, making a point of the fact that he, he was... Good and asleep, apparently not worried or whatever. For whatever reason, I mean, Peter is totally asleep. So, so then you have this story about him coming out of the prison and through the gates and so forth. 
and he thinks he's seeing a vision, and I'm, th and I'm thinking, see, you think you're seeing a vision. Are you asleep thinking you're seeing a vision? Are you awake thinking you're asleep and watching a vision? He's all confused until verse 11, which I read. It says that he comes to himself and he figures out, no, I was asleep, then I was awake, and it wasn't a vision at all. And, and I think it's just a pretty humorous uh, incident there. And then, of course, he goes to, to the house and Rhoda is there. And there's a little bit more, almost, you know, some, I guess you could say, a biblical humor in this uh, part of the story that involves Peter after James has been just cut off. And so that's the thing with Peter. Now, just some observations about this double story, not triple really, double story of James and uh, Peter. When God wants to, he can make the prayers of his people far more powerful than any human king. And so it is definitely a, an inspiration to pray, not only for the command, because we're commanded to, but we can see the effects of it here. Two apostles are captured. One is murdered. The other one is divinely protected by, a, by an angel of God, and there's no explanation given. So the question, why are some of God's servants given few years to serve and others live on into old age? Basically, the Lord gives, really gives one answer. And that is his sovereign and perfect will. That is the reason for one and for the other. It's interesting that it was Peter who, to whom Jesus said in John chapter 21, he said with regard to John, the apostle, the Lord told him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? follow thou me. And he is involved in this very story where in this case he, Peter, is being preserved by a divine intervention while his co-worker, we could say, James, has been brutally, brutally killed. While everyone is celebrating the miraculous liberation of Peter, in their answer to prayer, you can imagine the excitement. While they're celebrating, there's a family and a circle of close friends who are mourning and maybe hardly over the funeral for James. The contrast here is powerful, is poignant. So, were there not questions? for the family members of James? Of course there were. And maybe some of you have questions too, very similar to those, as you have lived closely this contrast in your own life or in your own family or in your own church, where maybe church people or a pastor or someone just died so soon. Well, what gives a, me a measure of peace is the honesty and transparency of the scriptures. By, by giving it to us this way, the Lord, it seems to me the Lord silently acknowledges the matter and whispers to our hearts, it's all fine, don't be afraid, don't worry. In the end, we have a theological answer the sovereign, perfect will of God, but in, in practical reality, it is the grace of God and only the grace of God that can bring peace to the hurting heart who has had to live, I guess you could say, on the raw end, on the negative end of this, this kind of situation. Okay, final thought. 1 Corinthians 4.2 is a verse I've chosen to sort of wrap this up with. You know the verse, probably. Moreover, it is required in stewards, in servants, that a man be found faithful. Stephen died almost immediately. 
after things began there in Acts. James, he died 12 years later. He had 12 more years than Stephen. Peter had 20 or 25 years more than James, plus the 12. John, the apostle, had another 25 years after Peter. So we have this huge span of almost, I don't know, maybe 70 years. Stephen, James, Peter, John, all in the perfect will of God. And we might think, though, poor Stephen, he missed out on so much. Are you sure? Are we sure he missed out? I think it was probably Peter who had, of all those four, had the best view of all of them in seeing everything develop from the day he died as the church began to grow and as it began to spread and Antioch and it, was, and it started going all over the place. Maybe it wasn't so bad after all, the privilege that Stephen was given though he had to be the first to die. None of us knows how long we have to serve God. Let's just make sure we are faithful. And how do we do that? One day at a time. That's all our Lord wants. May he help us do that. God bless you. Have a great day.